hello. So today we're going to be talking about the new Uni Jetstream, which is the Jetstream Ocean Plastic. We're going to also be, of course, talking about plastic and greenhouse gases. Oh yeah, it's going to be fun. <laughs> okay, so why am I going to give you a mini lesson on greenhouse gases in this video about this adorable new stationary product? Because I feel the need to explain some of these eco claims that Japanese stationary companies are making more and more often on their products. I started really wondering, is there something in the government that's driving more and more of the eco designated products coming out of Japan? And anyway, I just thought we should talk about it because probably you all know some information that I don't and please share it. I am not a greenhouse gases scientist or plastics scientist, so I'm really just going to be doing my best to extend my layman's understanding to my consumers. So anyway, first things first. Most likely you don't know that recently the Japanese government voted on a green transformation policy to support their goal of being carbon neutral by 2050. That's in like 27 years. So to get from that knowledge to talking about the recycled plastic in your stationery, we need to understand what the link is here. Some of you probably already understand it. This video is for those of you who don't. So here's my very simple explanation. I'm going to try to be succinct. When a nation says they have the goal of being carbon neutral, what they mean is the amount of greenhouse gases they're producing and the amount they're removing from the atmosphere is effectively canceling each other out. So they're trying to produce less and what they are producing, they're trying to cancel out. You need to understand in this whole equation that plastics are responsible for a massive amount of greenhouse gases. But importantly, not all plastics have the same carbon footprint. So several things really matter when you're judging a plastic for its contribution to greenhouse gases. So you want to know what it's made from. So for example, was that plastic created like from oil or was that plastic perhaps created from recycled plastic, something that already existed as garbage in the world, you know? You want to know the source of energy that powers, you know, the production of that product. And you also want to know how it's meant to be disposed of at the end of its life cycle. So all of those things make a difference and you can effectively reduce a product's greenhouse gases impact when you're paying attention to all of those things. So anyway, hopefully so far this is making sense and you're following along with me. <laughs> Since we hopefully all understand now the basics of like the connection between plastics and greenhouse gases, and you know that Japan has this goal of going carbon neutral by 2050, we can get into this new product that Uni has created. So the recycled ocean plastic jet stream is pretty much what it sounds like. So they have taken marine plastic and recycled it into this pen barrel. They've, they're also using, so there is this contact lens company in Japan called iCity. And I guess you can take your used disposable contact lens cases or packaging or something and like take them back in to be recycled. And so those are also being recycled into this product. So it's not just ocean plastic. Anyway, I'm not sure why they decided to use both, but hence we don't want to fall too far down the rabbit hole here. So <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> oh, and in case you care, the plastic being used is like plastic that's been taken out of the ocean and sea around Japan. So anyway, this is 
according to Uniball Mitsubishi, the first ballpoint pen made from marine litter. I did not fact check them on that, so if anyone knows of another one, like coming out of another country, you feel free to let me know. But otherwise, it's like your standard jet stream that a lot of you probably know and are used to. The barrel colors available as of now are light blue, turquoise, and coral. They're actually calling it ocean plastic light blue, ocean plastic turquoise, and ocean plastic coral. I think that's kind of a ridiculous color name. So I'm just calling it light blue, turquoise, and coral. The colors are supposed to invoke like ocean, sunset, beach colors. I think they do a good job of that. They come with standard with the Jetstream 0.7 black ink inside. You can refill with any Jetstream tip size that you like in the standard refills. So if 0.7 is too fine or too thick for you, you've got options there. You could go, you know, a lot finer. You could go thicker. 0.7 is a pretty standard ballpoint size for a lot of people. It's pretty well universally liked between both Japan and the U.S. A lot of people in the U.S. find like the 0.5 or 0.38 like way too fine. And of course in Japan, a lot of people would find like the one millimeter way too thick. So it's kind of a happy medium. But again, you can change it up. Hopefully, if you're interested in this product and you buy it, you will be refilling it since the point of it is to be a eco product. And yeah, I would love to hear from you all about this topic, anything you know and want to share. I would just be thrilled to learn more. And I kind of already showed you the swatch there, but I'll just, I'll just write a swatch as we're leaving and you drop your knowledge below if you want to. Okay, thank you so much. I will talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.